Before we get started here, Iowa Smokehouse, appreciate them sponsoring our coverage all off-season and all season, including the women's basketball season. Use the code Hawkeyes, folks, for 15% off your total order. Tasting is believing. And, um, boy, a great day, especially as it gets colder and you're staying inside and uh, maybe not grilling outside as much. Uh, great to have some good snacking products like their snack sticks here you see pictured or perhaps it's uh, their meat sticks, their uh, steak bites, even their uh, salsas and barbecue sauces go great with just about anything. Tasting is believing. Use the code Hawkeyes for 15% off your total order. Visit iowasmokehouse.com. That's iowasmokehouse.com. Also, Brad Van Meter and his team down at State Farm. Wherever you live in the great state of Iowa, be sure to call them and uh, see how Brad can save you and your family some money on insurance. 515-256-6480 or online at bradbandmeter.com. That's 515-256-6480. Brad and his small team will take care of you and your family. Again, give him a chance for a free quote. Get, get, just get a free quote, folks. See how he can save you some money on uh, whatever policies uh, you have in place. Again, bradbandmeter.com down in Des Moines, right down there on Fleur Drive in Des Moines. So the Iowa Hawkeye women with the big-time win over Bowling Green today. And uh, once again, uh, really uh, not close, 99-65 uh, to 65 the final. And Bowling Green came into this game, what, 5-1. and one. Um, You know, looking at their schedule, they hadn't really played any powers, I would say. Uh, but I will say uh, it was commented during the broadcast this was a very, very good win for Iowa. Just balanced scoring. We saw Caitlin Clark. I mean, she had a decent game, as she always does. Uh, for anybody else, it would be a really good game. Um, but in general, Iowa just really balanced across the board. Uh, I'll throw up some stats here to uh, kind of glance at. Caitlin had 24 points, 11 assists, 7 rebounds. So she's three rebounds away from another triple-double. But you see the balance. You've got 
both of the Iowa bigs, Stokey not playing today, both of the Iowa bigs still in double figures, and then the efficiency from Kate Martin, from uh, Sydney Falter. I had a hard time picking our RTI Threads player of the game. We'll get to our player of the game in just a second. Um, but you look at um, you look at what Bowling Green had done coming into this game. Like I said, they were 5-1, and one, um, had wins over Lehigh. Uh, Xavier was their one really good win. Uh, they did beat Cleveland State that uh, uh, first win of the season, first game of the season. They had a weird loss to Texas State. I don't know much about the Bobcats, but they lost by 26 to Texas State. But certainly that win against Xavier uh, is one that's notable, a team out of the Big East. So this was a, at least a formidable Falcons team, and Iowa just ran through them today. Uh, again, 99-65 the final, as you see our stats at the bottom of the screen. Um uh, Let's go ahead and get to our RTI Threads player of the game. If you missed the game, it was a broadcast on FS1. How about Sydney Falter? I just continue to be impressed with her uh, improvement from last year to this year. And Kate Martin was great today. She had 17 points on 7 and 9 shooting, including 3 from the free throw line, 3 of 4, excuse me, 3 of 4 from the free throw line, 5 boards and 3 assists, 2 turnovers for Kate. But how about Sydney Falter? I mean, this is efficiency, folks. 7 of 7 from the field. 14 points, four rebounds, three assists, zero turnovers. Now, she's not handling the ball as much as Kate Martin is, as much certainly as Caitlin Clark is. But, man, what she gives you on the glass, what she gives you in efficiency, she's become such a better shooter. She's not taking a bunch of threes. In fact, didn't shoot a three this evening. Missed her only free throw attempt. She is our RTI Threads player of the game. I'm just really impressed with what she's done. I think she's, as of right now, Iowa's most improved player. And uh, we saw some improvement from Gabby Marshall. She's struggled at times this year, but she was two of three from the field. And that's an improvement. She's went plenty of games where she doesn't hit anything. Uh, So good sign, especially when they're a little bit under uh, underhanded, under man, under woman, whatever you want to say uh, with Hannah Stolke being out with her knee injury. Hopefully she's back. Iowa's back on the court next Wednesday against Iowa state in a big road game up in Ames. So Sydney Falter is our RTI threads player of the game, which reminds us to plug RTI threads They're a part of the show, and they've been a part of basketball and our football coverage here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Be sure to check out uh, their their awesome lines of products for a number of Iowa athletes. Visit rtithreads.com, and I'll even throw up their banner here. Um, Cooper DeGene's apparel is available at cd3lacesup.com. I got my Cooper DeGene sweatshirt on. Of course, it's a a big day for the football team uh, here in Indianapolis, and we'll talk about that probably before the, the show is up. But uh, RTI Threads has also gotten a pair of line for uh, Carson Shire, Aiden Hall, Zach Lutmer, Aaron Graves. Those guys are coming on, and they're the future, especially if Cooper DeGene moves on. We don't know that that's the case. I've told people that is not a done deal yet. I can tell you that on good authority. That decision has not been made, even though people think it's obvious that he'll move on or that he should move on. Um, that decision has not yet been made. So uh, we'll hold out hope we get Cooper at least for one more year. But all of RTI Threads, all their athletes can be found online at rtithreads.com. So appreciate RTI Threads. Be sure to shop RTI Threads. The more you support our student athletes through our sponsors, the more you're supporting this show in Iowa athletics and our sponsors. It's just a great all-around deal. Um, Again, rtithreads.com and cd3lacesup.com. All right, uh, let's get to, I I know I missed a number of comments here to start out. I'll just tell everybody I am in Indianapolis right now. We're waiting the uh, Big Ten Championship game this evening. I will be at the game. And uh, so um, we'll be giving you post-game coverage after the game at some point. We'll see. uh, I plan on being live as quickly as I can following the conclusion of the game, barring something unforeseen where I feel the need to be a part of the press conference with Kirk and with the players post game. But that's why we have Tom Caker of HawkeyeReport.com. So my plan is to get back to my home base here in Indianapolis and get on the airwaves because it will be a late game. Of course, it starts at 8.15 Eastern, 7.15 for you folks in Iowa. And so it won't end until after, well after 11 o'clock Eastern time here in the state of Iowa. But we will be here. Coach John Patterson will be here. We are devoted. We are committed. We'll be here for post game coverage throughout the afternoon and throughout the evening here with women's basketball and, of course, Big Ten Championship Saturday for uh, the Gridiron. Let's go to our first Iowa Smokehouse caller of the day. We'll go to Ryan. Ryan, appreciate your loyalty to the show being here on Championship Saturday. Welcome. 
Hey, Corey. Credentialed Corey, excuse me. Corey, yep, you got it. And uh, thank God for Iowa Smokehouse. Unfortunately, this one's gone already, but I got plenty more for tonight. I'll tell you what you need to do real quick. I haven't really plugged it, but they have got a... Let me let me look it up while you're you go go ahead and give your comments. I want to I want to give you a product to try because I know you're a big Iowa Smokehouse advocate. Go ahead and and by the way, I won't give the code out because that would be wrong. But they gave me a twenty percent off my next order on a thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, they, they're running all kinds of deals. They were dealing deals this during uh, Cyber Monday week and uh, Black Friday. Um, let me find yes, their summer sausage. I don't know if you've ever ordered their summer oh, sausage. No, but. I'll I'll do that because I'm going to use my summer sausage. They've got garlic summer sausage, spicy summer sausage. Uh, obviously, just a great game day snack with some crackers and cheese or whatever you whatever you like yeah. to munch on. So lots of, yeah, lots of uh, stuff's pretty addictive. I ha I actually had to hide it from my kids, so they have no idea I have this. <laughs> anyway, uh, today was awesome. Um, I agree completely with you, Sydney Alt. Uh, Sydney was definitely player of the game. I, it just, I, I marvel at the improvement from last year to this year. She was seven to seven from the field. Um, I think she had three steals. I'm looking at the box score. Yeah, three steals, excuse me, four rebounds, three assists. Just a fantastic all around game for her. I'm so proud of her. Um, and, and I think. Even though Bowling Green isn't exactly, you know, an elite team, I think what we're starting to find, in keeping in mind that Hannah is out, I think what we're finding is we're going to be a lot deeper than we were last year. Last year we were more or less a three-person show, and we lost two of them. You know, Gabby and Kate were good role players, right? Frankly, Ryan... Sydney of Falter was playing a lot last year. She was not giving them what she's giving them this year on the glass, right? On the offensive end. Um, she is almost like a uh, maybe slightly less experienced Kate Martin. Um, she right. hasn't shown the acumen and knock down threes at the rate that, that Kate can when she gets hot, but um, she's just efficient with the basketball. She's uh, she's safe with the basketball, right? She's clean, she doesn't turn the ball over. I'm just really impressed with her, and and you're right. And the more Hannah Stolke's out, the more time you're going to see for Iowa's bigs. We even saw AJ Ediger get in there late. Um, Sharon had a double double. Yeah, Sharon had a double double. Absolutely, uh, solid all the way around. No question about it. And I, 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 this is just such a fun team to watch. Uh, they play together. They have chemistry, and you know. I, I, I was like just watching, looking at the box score I was watching, and I was like, wow, we're a good nine-person deep team. And I'm like, oh, wait, Hannah. What about Hannah? Yeah. For a second, I forgot about Hannah. I'm like, we're 10 deep when when everybody gets back into place. I, 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 I really believe we have the makings to go all the way this year. I really do. Uh, we came close last year, awfully close. And I think this is actually a better overall team. Yeah, you lost the third all-time leading scorer, and you lost Monica or uh, McKenna Warnock. But I'll tell you what: between you know people like Sydney and Sharon, and even Kate, who really have stepped up their game a lot, and you got some really good role players that 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 buy into the team concept. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, the sky's the limit for this crew. I really believe that. And, I mean, I, I really hope we get a showdown against the greatest of all time, Miss Angel Reese and Kim Mulkey and that crew with uh, officiating staff that didn't go to the Crooked Courtney School of Officiating. Well, hey, real quick, uh, speaking of officiating, this is segueing a little bit from Women's Hoops for a second. Do you know who one of the alternate officials for tonight's big game is? Crooked Courtney. For, for the football, for the football no. game. Dave right. Winovet. Tim O'Day. Oh, of course. Tim <laughs> O'Day is one of the alternates. Now, he's not on the call, but our good friend Tim O'Day from the Minnesota debacle with Cooper DeGene. He ain't my friend. 
Ain't I, my I, friend. I'm actually really surprised by that. I don't know how many options they have for alternate officials, but I thought I was surprised. Rod Snodgrass, who I think is the best big mm-hmm. official, I don't believe he's on the call tonight based on what I saw. Yeah, I, I just don't understand how some of these officials get assigned. And uh I it 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 I guess I thought the Big Ten Championship would be officiated by who grades out as the best officials throughout the season. And that's the way it should be. It's the way it's and, and not some guy who, you know, is part of, I'm sure he wasn't the only part, Tim O'Day, but part of a, hey, let's re officiate a play because, uh, you know, not to get back into that painful thing, but we're a legit 11 win team, I believe. And, and you, you reviewed the call to see if Cooper went out of bounds. He did not. And then they decided to just go back and reofficiate something that wasn't originally called in the first place. And are you telling me that's reviewable? You know, to be, I, replay is not supposed to be to reofficiate. It's supposed to be to see if bang, bang plays are correct. Okay, like in baseball, you know, th- did did you get to first base in time or not? In football, did your pinky toe step out of bounds or not? That's really what it's supposed to be. Not, not hey, we're such incompetent idiots that we're going to have to look back at a replay to decide what we're going to do. I don't disagree with you, Ryan. Um, I think the bottom line is with that play, it sounds to me, based on the makings of the rule and the intricacies of review, had Cooper not scored, they would not have been able to review it. And that's part of the issue with the rule and how the review thing yeah. is set up because you, you're right. You shouldn't be able to reofficiate just because a guy happens to score. He said, Too bad he didn't just go out at the one, right? <laughs> or go out at the 20 because they had to kick the field goal and been up. And they probably right. would have been anyway. So – it's just uh, it, it's a, just a joke. You're it right. is a joke. It's it's absolutely disgusting. Um, just real fast, couple thoughts. Um, I'm watching the Oregon Michigan game right now. Yep. I'll tell you what. It's going to be a long life ahead of us watching games at Oregon. It looks like gold dust barfed all over their floor. That's how it's always been, right? Oh my God! I cannot watch this. It's but, like honestly, I like the idea of seeing basketball games in, in, in environments and arenas and places where we're not used to watching Iowa. We play, we saw the men play there in the NIT. I think it was Matt Gaten's senior year, or Devin Marble's mm-hmm. senior year. Correct. They lost. Um, but I mean, Oregon's a good program. I, I, I like the idea of, of a, you're right. The, the court is unique. It's kind of ugly. Um, it's really hard. I mean, really, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning if there's something wrong with my TV or not. It's that bad. It's like distracting, you know? Yeah. It's very, very distracting. It's not as bad as, let me say, it's not as bad as the in season tournament uh, courts for the NBA. Have you seen these? Oh, yeah. They're completely yeah. blue or they're completely purple or it's, it, that's weird. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just, anyways, uh, the last thing. When we become Big Ten champions tonight yep. and give a big glass of shut-up juice to the nation, uh, the bar will be open all night long with Iowa Smokehouse also being served. Uh, funny quick story. I'm good friends with the accountant at my company. He's a diehard Michigan fan. And right before I left work, I emailed him my personal phone number. And I said to him, just just in case you want to congratulate me on the spot instead of Monday, here's my number. I'll tell you, can I just say something real quick, Ryan? So I was down at the uh, convention center right next to Lucas Oil Stadium right before this game, basically. And I got a chance to, to chat with Coach Patterson in person. I, I'm just telling you the truth. There were It was probably 80% Michigan fans. Where we were, and keep in mind, you have the you have the Indiana Convention Center, you have different halls, you have Big Ten Fan Fest, and then you have the Hawkeye Huddle, which will start here in about an hour and a half. 
but I would say about at least two thirds to three fourths of what I saw was Michigan fans. I, I think it's going to be overwhelmingly maize and blue tonight. I was going to have to play. They're, they're not going to get any favors. I'm not going to be at favors from officiating because the Big Ten is going to want the, you know, the best chance at the playoff is Michigan to be undefeated and get a higher seed in the playoff. I don't think the Big Ten is going to be left out either way. I think somehow the Big Ten will get at least one entry in, even if Iowa beats <laughs> They'll Michigan. count Washington. <laughs> yeah, well, but by the way, Texas did just beat Oklahoma State. So if there's any chance, if there was any hope that Iowa could sneak in the back door of the playoff if they win tonight, that's going to hurt their chances. They needed Oklahoma State to somehow knock off Texas. So that's going to hurt their chances. But the, the Big Ten wants Michigan in the playoff. Don't get, you know, don't, let's not fool anybody here. And, and I think that's exactly part of why, uh, you know, uh, Tim O'Day might be as part of this crew. Uh, it's obvious Michigan, they want Michigan. But then again, maybe com the commissioner doesn't want doesn't want Crooked Jim winning. But you know, as a conference, yeah, as a conference, I mean, Michigan still they're very talented, obviously, but they are tainted a little bit because of this whole scandal. Um, I don't I don't really think that takes away from their outstanding talent whatsoever. However, yeah, you know. Michigan's a bigger brand than Iowa. We're kind of the little engine that could, and uh, I guess we're supposed to just be glad that we're here to get spanked, and that's sort of the attitude. Um, I know this. Yesterday I watched 2016 all over again with Keith Duncan's field goal. Sure. Just to remind myself, undefeated number three Michigan can lose to an Iowa team that's not as good as this one. You're absolutely right, and you know, I, I saw a couple people on on YouTube and responding to this channel leading up to the game tonight have made the comment that you know, Corey, you hate a Michigan, or you have a, a vendetta against Michigan fans. I, I just call it like it is, and people don't like that. I, I I just, you know, they don't like when you know you somewhat give your team. I mean, there's no question. This is an Iowa channel. What do people want me to say? Ah, I got to lose by forty. Um, and the other thing about it is I am simply responding to the level of aggression that I've witnessed in the Michigan fan base toward me. You, you've seen it, Ryan. You've been a part of this show. I just have never experienced that. I, I've just never experienced it. And, and we deal with all these fan bases throughout the year with our coverage. And uh, it is what it is. I, I have a lot of respect for a lot of different Michigan fans. I've just never experienced that level of vitriol. And I want nothing more than for Iowa to win tonight. Now, do I expect them to win? No. I posted my prediction yesterday. I got Iowa 23, Michigan 13. But uh, You mean the other way around? What's that? You said Iowa 23, Michigan 13. Yeah, the other way around. Michigan 23, Iowa 13. Okay, that sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, you know, honestly, I don't really think Nebraska fans that I've come in contact with are all that bad. Uh, they're probably a little humbled, uh, you know, throughout the last decade or so. There's some bad, there, there's some outrageous fans in every fan base, right? And, and Nebraska fans kind of have a reputation. I'm just saying, I, I, I just, what I've experienced with the Michigan fan base over the last two years is unprecedented. But there's also people who are, you know, very kind people that are a part of the fan base and interact with on this very show. So. I, all I'm going to tell you is outside of Northwestern, um, I, and I guess it'd be equal to distance to Purdue. Madison is the closest place that I can watch Iowa, even including Iowa City. And I refused to go there because when I was like 14, some 50-year-old hick from Wisconsin spat tobacco in my face because I was wearing Iowa gear walking with my mom and dad. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and I've just never... I, I, I've always detested Wisconsin and with every every bone in my body. Let me just say, uh, Ryan, Wisconsin, the men got a really good win today over Marquette, number three team in the country. Yes, uh, yes. The men. I mean, they're, well, they're, Gary Close has to be happy with that because uh, he's <laughs> a big, Gary. big, great guard guy. Gary's going to be on the show Monday evening. We'll ask Gary if he was happy about that. I, I'm curious. I'm curious, uh, you know, with uh, – Greg Gard having a signature win like that. And, you know, he he's, he was Wisconsin's assistant 
as long as he's been Iowa's assistant, right? Sure. But but he was un- but circumstances were different when he left Wisconsin than when he left Iowa. That's all I'll say. Cir- circumstances sure. were different. True, so. true. Anyway, Corey, have fun tonight. Um, yeah, right. you and too. Enjoy try, the game. try to try to stomach the vitriol and um, just remember it's hard to be humble when you're a Hawkeye. Take care, man. I'll talk Thank to you, you tonight, right. okay? Appreciate it, sir. And keep in mind, uh, yes, I'll be at the game. I will not be in the crowd, so I won't have to deal with the fans per, per se. Now, I don't know what level of the media or like some of the Nebraska media that are literally homers. Like I was covered a game uh, up in the press box. This was years ago when I was doing radio and covered an Iowa-Nebraska game up in the press box of Kinnick. And you could hear next door, and I understand, like their play-by-play guy, their radio guy is going to be involved, but you could hear the guy next door, ah, I'm, 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 you know, just – I mean, you could just tell the passion within. I mean, not that Gary Dolphin doesn't have passion, but like I think a lot of people in the Nebraska media, and certainly the radio people, you know, they're they're working for Nebraska. Um, so, anyways, uh, we'll see. I'm I'm looking forward to the experience. It's going to be a different experience. Lucas Oil is going to be great, and the Big Ten has got a great fan fest. If you're here in Indy today, run over to the Indiana Convention Center, get your wristband if you haven't already gotten it, and run over to the Big Ten Fan Fest. They got some basketball, golf, football activities. They got kids playing Madden over there. It's just a really cool event. And then Hawkeye Huddle starts in about an hour and a half over in the same complex, different hall. And uh, you need to get your wristband. If you haven't gotten a wristband, you need to run down there and get one. I don't know how many wristbands they have left or if they have any left, frankly. Uh, But uh, that's all going on pregame. And then, of course, we'll have the game at uh, about 7 p.m. Central time. I don't know that I'll be doing anything live as far as pregame coverage. If I get up in the press box and get situated and I'm in a position to do that, maybe. I doubt it. I'm not going to guarantee any of that. Uh, I would have loved to have done that, but consider this a brief pregame as we talk a little bit about uh, Hawkeye athletics, including the women and the football team. Um, I see a number of people in the comments that I did not get to, and I apologize if I if I don't get to your comment. Of course, Super Chats, if you want to comment to uh, to appear this evening or right now, uh, throw in a super chat real quick. We've got at least 10 minutes left in the show and we'll talk about it. Tiger Hawk uh, YouTube says we need some pregame. Well, I do my best Tiger Hawk, but uh, don't know the situation up in the press box. I know I'll be looking for it. I'm hungry. I'm hungry right now. I'm not afraid to admit that I'll be looking forward to um, downing some food prior to the start of the game uh, as well. Um, let's go to uh, our next caller. I believe. Well, first James, uh, I think, Actually, James is our next caller. But James says in the chat, I'm starting to get annoyed with double, double, tri- uh, tri- double, triple. What am I looking at? With double, double, triple, double chasing every game. Stolke already got hurt because she was left in too long and we keep doing it for no reason. Well, I knew, here's the thing, James, and you know I've addressed this. Let's go ahead and get our next caller presented by Iowa Smokehouse into the show, James. You know, uh, I've commented on this a number of times in the past. And when I cut up a segment about Lisa Bluter leaving her, her star players, her starters, including Caitlin Clark in the game, when you're up 30, when you're up 40 late in the game, there were some people that were like, Bluter knows best. Don't doubt Bluter. She knows what she's doing. You're not on the authority. I'm not any less critical of Bluter, excuse me, than Bluter than I am of Ferentz or, or uh, Fran McCaffrey. And I agree with you. I think it's ridiculous. Doesn't mean I don't like Lisa Bluter. I just don't see why I should do that. Well, especially with with CC, because it seems like every time Caitlin's in a game, like if she's eight or nine, it's just, she's going to stay until she gets ten or eleven. And I feel like, in that retrospect, it's like I get she hasn't got hurt yet, but it's like to me, it kind of makes a world like, oh, there's just so many triple doubles. I mean, yeah, because they. And it's, yeah, because they chase it all the time. Not not all the time. Like sometimes she doesn't actually get it, but like sometimes they just chase it. But it's like I, I just I, I have a different version of what I and I'm not a coach. I'm not a player, so maybe I have no position to say this. But I'm gonna again be objective. I don't know what the point is in chasing stats. Would we rather accumulate triple doubles and double doubles for Caitlin, or would you rather ensure uh, health when you can? I'd rather ensure health and yeah. have the and have the people who need the time I feel like to grow play like obviously you see what Jim Fee did today with her time you know but like if you give her yeah. more time you don't know if they can play that way because you don't give them more time like I maybe Keith Johnson is not ready but like this is a game to get her time against you're at 30 
I mean, not ready against like big time play, like like Big Ten play. I understand. Like, oh, if you're not playing against Big Ten teams, again, I what, I've said this before. You're up forty. Yeah, there's no need not to play here. Tournament setting a couple days ago. You're up forty. Even if your team totally collapses, if the the young players come in and they totally blow it, y- you win by twenty, right? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't really matter. You're yeah, still going to win the game by by twenty or more. And like you can't play Johnson Etienne two minutes and then be like in the future if she doesn't pan out to be the way you want her to be, right? Like maybe say next year she doesn't take that jump to two hundred to be able to be like, oh, why didn't she take the jump? Maybe it's because they don't she don't play her as much as they can, where it's like you're up thirty, you could play her most of the you play her most of the second of the uh, the fourth quarter, I guess, maybe not second half, fourth quarter at least. You could play like all the fourth quarter. Obviously I gotta get her out a little bit, but she could have made the subs necessary to get her out. But you don't need to be playing Caitlin until Two minutes. I think it was like two minutes left into the fourth quarter. You don't need to be doing that. I agree. I, I, I you know, I completely agree with you. But it's again, it's it's kind of like some of the conversations we've had about the Iowa football def- uh, offense, the Iowa bat- men's basketball defense. We're kind of talking to a wall because what we say yeah. doesn't make a difference. I mean, I'm going to continue to express my opinion, but it's like the waist down conversation. I got ripped earlier this week. Ah, Corey's ripping on the waist downs again. Well, it's, it hasn't gone away. It's still a problem. <laughs> it's still a problem. And I believe it's still a problem that I was not getting their starters, including Caitlin Clark out of the game when they can. And I just well, don't know of another example of someone at any level doing this. Maybe I shouldn't say any level, at least at the college NBA level, when you're up by that much, why you wouldn't take, your best player out, especially someone like Caitlin Clark. For me, especially how long it was. Like, I understand maybe – not even understand, but, like, if you play her a couple of minutes, it's like, okay, it's still bad, but it's not as bad. You played her pretty much the whole fourth quarter, and that's an even worse look. Like, you played her pretty much the whole fourth quarter, and that makes it look even worse. And as a coach for the other team, I would be saying something too. Because, like, for me, it's like, bro, that's disrespectful to me. That's disrespectful to other teams, I feel like. Like, as a coach, if if – my team's losing by 30 and you still have your best player in the game for the whole fourth quarter. That's disrespectful. Well, just real quick in response to this chat, I understand the, the comment. Caitlin's a show. It's why people tune in. She's not playing most of the second half TV networks. Won't be happy. Who who cares? Um, like I, I know it matters. I'm not saying it, the, t- the TV yeah. networks don't matter, but like Lisa Bluter's job is to, get this team to a chance where they can compete for a national championship. And I believe you're compromising that. If you're bowing to the TV networks, you're bowing to stats, you're compromising that. We've already seen, like you said, uh, James, Hannah Stolke got hurt late in the game when she shouldn't have even been in the game. It, it's just, I, you know, Caitlin, I, I hope it never happens, obviously, but she goes down, tears her ACL uh, in one of these games. What are we going to be saying if it happens when she's up, th- when they're up thirty-five or forty, are we really not going to be sitting there and saying that's on Lisa for playing her? I, I think you have to look at coaching if that happens. Yeah, and I feel like okay, I feel like maybe it wouldn't be as big of an issue, like you said, if Stokey didn't get hurt. But it's all retrospective. Like, there's always that risk. Obviously, like you said the other day, but like it's still you don't want to risk even more because the longer you leave them in, that's more risk you're giving them. If that makes sense sure. to, to get yeah. hurt. But I feel like, obviously, I probably rather chat a little bit by saying I don't think Iowa really has a chance But tonight. But, I mean, for me, it's just like, I, I hope I'm wrong. And obviously, you know, I'll eat my words if I am. Obviously, I'll say I'm wrong. I'm not, you know me, I'm not the person that's not going to say I'm wrong. If I'm if I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. You know that. So, like, for me, I'll admit if I'm wrong. But we're all wrong in life. So, I just don't see how Iowa gets I'm 17. Ne- I'm never wrong. James. I just don't see how Iowa gets 17. I just don't even see how really Iowa gets 13. They can't move the ball. If they can't move the ball against other teams, how they move the ball against Michigan? Hold on, hold on, Michigan. It, it takes one kick return. Yeah, but we don't have Cooper though. So that kind of that kind of who says Caden Weijin won't take one back? Like we don't know that. Uh, yeah, you, you're right. You're right. But I, I have Not more faith. If, obviously, I'd have more faith that Cooper was back there than Caden. But Caden also has speed. So if he gets the outside, he might. Have a chance. Caden knows how to return kicks. I've been impressed yeah. with his kickoff return vision. The problem is kickoff returns are just a foreign part of the game nowadays. We don't even really kickoff return either because mo- 90% of the time he'll fair catch it even if it's in play because that's what they want him to do. Now, okay, what do you think is going to happen here? You think if we win the toss, you think we're going to go with the ball first? I uh, Probably. Probably because it, that seems to be 
I don't know why they wouldn't. Um, that seems to be kind of the the game plan from Iowa is they want to get a couple of first downs and then try to control the field. If you kick off, you are on the risk of losing the field right away and not getting it back. Yeah. So yeah. I would rather be at the 25 or the 30 to start out, hope you get a first down. And then even if you don't get a first down, you go three and out. Torrey Taylor can still pin the other team back inside the 20. I think that's why Iowa takes the ball first so much is because they're looking at, at Torrey Taylor and thinking, hey, we can use him as a weapon more so if we than if we kick off to start the game. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see. I'm happy you're there, obviously, and uh, be safe in general, you know, because be safe coming back home as well. I don't know if it's supposed Thanks. to snow or not, so – you know, we had some we had some rain coming in last night, uh, but it was warm enough, and um, I, I think it's supposed to stay warm enough here in Indy. And uh, we'll get back tomorrow, and hopefully a, a happy day. Oh, if not, this yeah. is going to be an experience that I'm going to enjoy. And um, one more thing, I got before I go too, and this is not on the women's side, just on the men's side. But last time we played Purdue, you know what happened? Uh, basketball. Yeah. I, I don't even remember the last they time. They lost to Northwestern. I'm pretty sure 90% sure they lost to Northwestern oh, before I know. Play I know. Now you know what happens this time? They lose to Northwestern again right before we play. It's like, why did they Northwestern beat them every time before we play them? I'm pretty sure last year before we played them, they lost to Northwestern too as well, if I remember right. Yeah, that that does not – I agree. I don't think that helps the cause if you're Iowa. I just don't. Yeah, and now they're playing mad at their place. It makes it even worse, I feel like, because you're already playing mad. You lost a game you probably, they definitely shouldn't have lost. But that also gives you hope, and I get basketball and football are two different games, but it also shows you, like, you never know in any sport. You know what I mean? You never know in any sport where, like, anything could happen. Like, you truly never know. And, obviously, it was weird to see – it's clearly Washington win the last ever Pac-12 championship, and it's weird to see two Big Ten schools in parentheses, you know, play in the, Big Ten, in the Pac-12 championship game. But They'll both be there. They'll both be here in the – in 24, so – but I right, enjoy your night, and I'll be watching the game, obviously. And I'll be on this show no matter how late it is. You know me, I try to support no matter what. So Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Appreciate James. Appreciate Ryan. And about 100 people or so that have been watching live. Appreciate all you being here. Yes, I'm not in my home base. I am in Indianapolis. And uh, we'll be in the press box for the game today. Appreciate the Big Ten in Iowa. I think I was probably a part of that, granting credentials. So, um, plan is to be uh, back on post game coverage uh, following the game. Uh, we'll see. We can get back in about a half an hour, but that's going to be give or take. And we'll probably provide some updates from the press box as we get them. Um, stay locked in if you want to stay locked into my Twitter. Uh, be sure you follow and, and hit the notifications for or hit the bell for notifications at From the Hawkeye on Twitter, at From the Hawkeye on Instagram, and then From the Hawkeye the Storm on Facebook. But I'll be sending updates out on Twitter, I'm sure, throughout the evening. Please share this show out on social media, just, just the channel in general. we got so much coming, not just with football tonight, but men's and women's basketball as we continue through the winter. And be sure to support our sponsors. We talked about Iowa Smokehouse. How about RTI Threads? They are supporting so many different Iowa athletes. Visit cd3lacesup.com. Aaron Graves, Carson Shire, Aiden Hall, Zach Lutmer, all available at rtithreads.com. They're awesome lines. And by the way, Cooper DeGene is up for a couple of different awards, including the Jim Thorpe Award. We're going to get an announcement, sounds like Monday, so stay tuned. Be sure to stay locked in. If you get a chance to go online and vote for Cooper in those awards, be sure to do that. But again, announcement for Cooper DeGene for RTI Threads athlete Cooper DeGene coming Monday evening. I hope for that young man that he wins at least one of those awards. Um, he has been so good in special teams, return duties, as well as, of course, as a DB in that Iowa uh, defense. Uh, RTI Threads player of the game for today is Sydney a falter. Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Seven for seven from the field. Four rebounds, three assists, no turnovers. That is what you want from who I think has maybe been the sixth woman of the year, sixth man of the year for Iowa wins basketball. She was phenomenal. Congratulations to Sydney Falter. And Kate Martin was really good tonight as well. Uh, I'll throw up these stats toward the bottom of the screen one last time uh, before we sign off for the afternoon. Caitlin Clark, 24 points, 11 assists, 7 rebounds. Kate Martin had 17 points, 5 boards, 3 assists. Sharon Goodman had a double-double, 12 points, 11 rebounds. And Addison O'Grady was 3 rebounds away from a double-double. She added 10 points. Molly Davis had, uh, let's see, 5 points on just 2 of 3 shooting, had 4 rebounds to go along with 4 assists and 2 turnovers. Gabby Marshall made 2 threes, had 6 points. Kelly Fierbach. Uh, played 18 minutes, went scoreless, did not attempt a shot in this game. She did get two assists on the day. Addison O'Grady mentioned her. Taylor McCabe played some, only took one shot, missed it, uh, did add one steal and an assist. 
Jada Jimphy, how about that? The young uh, redshirt freshman, seven points for Jada, three of three from the field, including a three late. She's got a bright future, one assist as well. Kenise Johnson, ETN, played a couple of minutes, as did A.J. Ediger, who added four points on two of three shooting and a rebound. The Hawkeyes over the Bowling Green Falcons. Final score, uh, 99-95, and they'll move on to take on uh, Iowa State up in Hilton Coliseum. So we go from... uh, Game to game to game with this this time of year. It is a busy, busy time of year. And, of course, want to thank Iowa Smokehouse for helping make the coverage here from the Hawkeye of the Storm possible. Be sure to check out all their products. I was just browsing their selection here earlier today, whether we're talking about their summer sausage, their meat sticks, their steak bites. Everything's great. And they've got this uh, and this, this uh, sweet honey barbecue sauce that's to die for. I had it with pork chops the other day, but, uh, man, you could have it with anything, steak, whatever. I mean, anything. It's just great. Uh, again, visit iowasmokehouse.com and build your card up and spend 50 bucks. You'll get 15% off your order. Spend 50 bucks. You'll get free shipping at your doorstep. What a great way to get stocked up for the winter months and so many game days ahead. iowasmokehouse.com. Use the code Hawkeyes. Tasting is believing with Iowa Smokehouse. A reminder, folks, I'll be back with you later this evening. It's going to be Iowa Post game following the Big Ten Championship game, and myself and Coach Don Patterson will be live talking Hawkeyes and Wolverines. We're going to be here no matter what, folks. I hope it's not 42-3 like it was two years ago. My prediction earlier today is Iowa keeps it relatively close, and uh, my prediction was 23-13 Michigan, but never count Iowa out in a game like this, and uh, Kirk Ferentz loves being the underdog. Erica, just curious, how does one get credentials? Uh, it's all through the application process through the Big Ten, and they, I'm assuming, vet you through the university. And we've been a part of, I've been able to be a part of uh, more media involvement with Iowa athletics, and I think that helps the case. Uh, I still did not expect a non traditional media outlet like myself to be able to get credentials. So I do appreciate that from the Big Ten, Iowa, whoever was behind that. But it is an application process through the Big Ten uh, conference leading up to uh, leading up to the game. And let's see, um, Corey, uh, Condado Tacos. Okay, Condado Tacos, says Tiger Hawk. Appreciate that. Jack, thank you for being here. Appreciate the kind words. Same for Doug and uh, X Deegan Gambler. Uh, White uh, Tiger uh, Hawk uh, YT, Wayfair of the Wilderness. Thank you all for being here. I'll be back with you tonight for postgame coverage following Iowa-Michigan football. Have a great night. Go Hawks. Kickoff at 7.15 p.m. Central Time on Fox. We'll talk to you later.